court, mm-hmm. and uh, a previous order was made um, on my uh, on custody and maintenance and so forth with respect to. Now, it, my question is this: you know, when you're dealing with a prosecutor and the judge and yourself, that's one thing. That's a criminal situation. This is a family matter. Mm-hmm. You're dealing with your basically your ex-wife and yourself standing before the judge, and we have. Normally, there's two different lawyers. Uh, where I, what wh- my question is, is how does that come into play with an EDP or, um, for example, if you, if there was a case of a, uh, a court matter and, and you're, we weren't in attendance, is there a way to petition the court to overturn the previous legal determinations because you weren't there, and with the process of the EDT, EDP, uh, sorry. Uh, that's my question. That's kind of a, a good, jumbled up question here. But. No, 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 no. It's a good, it's a good question. There's a fellow that um, was um, we got a notice of this week was put in 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 jail, who uh, had a terrible, terrible experience through the family law courts and his children being put into custody after his wife, his ex-wife, uh, was found to to have some serious drug problems and uh, why he originally was not considered or deemed an appropriate parent was never entered into I didn't get into that that was personal but he had gone through the process he also suffered unfortunately because of this is I mean there's nothing more raw an emotion than seeing your children not only taken from you but then placed in some foster care uh, and then the system basically um, denying you the right to see your own children. I mean, that to me is, is would be like someone peeling your fingernails off your fingers or worse. And it sent him quite, and I have to say this because it's honest, it sent him quite, quite mad. And he ended up sending, despite being you know, strongly suggested to him that he not do this because it is then used against him, He couldn't stop himself sending off emails and letters and mixing remedies and all sorts of things to the ultimate result that they've arrested him and put him in prison as a threat. Um, I would say that that the the evidence of the family court is that they're clearly making some joy and money and success out of what they're doing and they are absolutely absolutely litigiously trigger happy with anything that does not conform to their rules in other words if you think about where where, what is the most dangerous job in their system as far as um, risk is concerned it is the family courts yeah yeah and it's and they got emotions involved yeah for sure yeah yeah. and and so the people who are there I don't think are there to be cruel, but the system is there to be cruel. And the the problem I'd suggest to you with the family law courts is that anything that is out of the ordinary automatically is instinctively viewed as a threat. I give, and it's image training to the court procedure. I'll give you an example of where this also applies. If you take all the big, now massive, super massive sheriff um, departments in the major cities, these new huge cinder block buildings. They look like high rise that people go to now and are processed in the hundreds, yeah? Mm-hmm. The, 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 those, these new sheriffs, when you go in there, they're no longer sheriffs in the old traditional. They're dressed up like um, Nazis, yeah? And many actually look like Nazis. And they're trained now that if absolutely anybody looks the wrong way, they can beat them down, taser them, spray them, and chain them to chairs until they urinate themselves, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you are dealing, unfortunately, in the family courts where any single documentation that deviates from the norm is probably going to work against you, not for you. Right. Now, see, this is what I've got, you know, out of listening to you the last few weeks and, of course, reviewing all these 
you know the, the older ones i got i slowly have been coming to that realization that's this i have never viewed the court as a friend of mine it's an enemy and sure. especially when it comes to family and, and father in particular yes. of course it all goes back to the destruction of the family unit and breaking down yes, the layer of, of uh, authority and and yep. that's where i that's where i come in my this my ex-wife is um this has been a i i actually typed a couple of questions a couple of weeks ago about yep. you know this uh, in the forum but uh, the uh, what it what it boils down to is my ex-wife this has sort of prevented me even though I've gotten court orders and gone to pick the yep. children up they, she moved the children away a thousand kilometers which is quite a ways to her, another province I'm in British Columbia she's in Alberta and yeah. I, because I didn't understand the law at first, and I was stupid. I, I, I allowed that to happen. But then I've sort of been fighting this, and I just want to see my kids, and I want to have, be part of their life. So, I'm. I, well, this well, is why I was sort well, of hoping. Well, sorry to intervene, because I know that's. I mean, it's a, it's a, a terrible, terribly sad story. And I, I don't. I'm sorry, just to quickly intervene. Is I would consider as the last caller in queries, consider the ADP process as a separate parallel process which is about your claim of right now how you deal specifically with the family court I would I would um, consider that your knowledge is really really important yeah. um, that you approach it very very carefully like when a judge did, sorry hmm? I'm sorry but it, when a judge rules uh, say hey you know the custody goes here and this you pay this much and this is this and this is that an yeah. offer in a yes, of course it is. Of course it is. Okay, yeah. Okay, Always that's, an that's one of the questions that I need to ask. There is one yeah. other quick question on a different subject. What sure. about previous criminal records uh, being expunged or trying to get rid of old old records, uh, you know, 20, 15 years ago? Is that a possibility with an EDP? It, it, there is possibilities um, down the road, but at the moment uh, we're dealing with a system unraveling. So, yeah, yes, we, yes. Right, okay. yeah, we're right in the midst of, of saying to, it'd be equivalent to, to trying to talk to the commanders of tanks as they roll through the city. Yeah, say, exactly, look, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So the answer is yes, but certainly not yet. Okay. One last quick one. There, yes. This com the communities and contacting other members for discussion and, and uh, yes. you know, in my area to get a hold of people. You know, like even in the Bible, it says, uh, you know, to 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 uh, don't forsake to gather yourselves because it's a good thing, and it, it's an interchange of a thought and encouragement. I'm yep. not, I don't I don't know how to find people that are in my area. How do I go about that? Well, um, while while we've had many many hundreds now, well over a thou um, thousand and a bit people um, register with with email, as a matter of principle. Um, we can't be sharing that around in terms of knowing where people are. It, it's up to, to people to, to want to do that. But you've got the U of U, the University yeah. of UK, university.uk.info. You've got the um, Skype groups. You've got um, Facebook. You've got a, a multitude of tools that people can utilise and you have the ability yourself that if you don't find one, to set one up and then bring people across as they come. But all we're going to do with the communities is make that process easier. But honestly, if people, if people don't want to come together now and are waiting passively for it to happen, then the communities are not going to suddenly become active. I mean, the, the issue is people being passive. Um, it, once you find... If you're motivated, well, this is a frightening monster. The, the society is a frightening monster, really. Right. Well, of course it is. But as I said, ending fear once and for all right. is that people coming together and communicating it is something that I can't physically... There's nothing I will do that can get people to be that way. So getting the tools to make it better is great. But, but getting people to communicate is up to you and others. And I've given you some suggestions... It's how you run with that and how you use that. That's so learning, how to, learning how to use learning how to use the computer. <laughs> okay, thank yes, you so much. I appreciate okay, it. Good appreciate on. your time. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Great. Thank you for those questions. Yeah, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, 
Next question on the chat. Would you please clarify, Frank, on how dishonor in the physical affects the spiritual, which in turn affects physical ending, uh, physically ending the Roman cult? Absolutely. There's the kingdom of ideas. Ideas that affect the mind because it affects the dimension and the environment of the mind. Let me give you an example. It doesn't occur to us that we could live in beautiful buildings. Um, we would like to maybe, but we're happy to accept living in boxes, squared boxes. And because we're happy to live in squared boxes, some of us may find ourselves in prison for a part of time or a long time in a smaller box. So we condition our mind. Our mind gets conditioned in the environment to believe that boxes are part of it, similar to cars and travel. We're conditioned to believe now that the only way the human race, the um, homo sapiens species, will grow into the future is large cities and that we, by necessity, will have to travel long distances to work. Well, that's not how societies worked, or that a city could not be effectively hundreds, if not thousands, of villages that are all interconnected. But our conditioning is that this is a monolithic plantation where we work one place, we, we live another place, and that we are totally dependent on the system for our survival. So ideas affect the mind, and because ideas affect the mind, the mind is affected and the mind produces the result. So let me go through it. Mind plus idea equals behavior. I mean, that is the most powerful example of the power of an idea. Rome is an idea. Um, their, their claim of authority is an idea. Their laws are an idea. But because they're an idea believed by the mind, we make them real. I mean, think about this. If the FBI... I believed when I was a child that the FBI stood for something because I would watch the shows on TV and you'd see them fighting bad guys and they were men that couldn't be corrupted and that they would try their best. So I grew up in a country, not even America, believing that the FBI stood for the highest of integrities. I now realize that the FBI are a gun for hire. They're more corrupt than the worst militias in the world. They're full of stupid, stupid people and they do not give a damn about their own badge. I mean, I was... I mean, heartbroken to see those images as a child broken by the reality of the world. But in spite of that, if, if, the FBI, if the FBI and the members of the FBI one day woke up and said, you know what, I'm not going to work for an organisation that lies to me and lies to the world, and they all resigned at once, it'd be the end of the FBI. So ideas are extremely powerful, but you need an idea, and that's what Eucadia is. So an idea is described, an idea is formed. How many people accept that there is a covenant of one heaven? They may not agree with it. They may not have read it. Most people haven't. But they accept that there is a thing called the covenant of one heaven. Well, if there's a covenant of one heaven, and I ask you, does heaven exist, you wouldn't even blink and say, yes, it does. So that's the power of an idea. Even its existence changes the dimension, and that's what we're dealing with. So there's some examples of how an idea changes behavior, and behavior ends uh, a kingdom of ideas. And that's what we're doing. We're consuming them and changing them. Um, and you can see it with your own mind. When you cease to fear then you can do great things. When people cease to fear, their world ends. That's the power of the mind. It only needs a few thousand in America, in a country of 300 plus million, it only needs a few thousand to wake up, to change it. That's the power of an idea. I hope I answered the question. Yes, very good, Frank. Uh, did you say it also has to do with the, the masses or the numbers that would recognize that? Uh, entity, so to speak, or the Roman cult. For example, the Pope is recognized um, all the way around the world. 
he's recognized he's, he's recognized by um, over a billion well there are over a billion uh, Catholics but he's recognized by the majority of the planet but there's an interesting thing about not